Weld.com is on the road to Lansing, Michigan to check out one of the premier weld art festivals in the country. This one's a little different though because all of the art is built from scrap metal. This is Weld in the Groove, Scrap Fest. Well, everyone is getting all set up here at Scrap Fest here in Lansing, Michigan. Just putting a little grease in the joints. Put a little grease in the joints. Nice. You never know who you're gonna run into at Scrap Fest, and we happen to run into one of our amazing hosts, Chris Ewing. Look at him, here in person. What do you think so far? You thought you were gonna come to Michigan and not find me? <laughs> come on now. I was hoping to find you in Michigan. Here I is. We're here at Scrap Fest, and you've developed what we call Iron on the Move, the Peacock. Can you tell us a little bit about your sculpture? Totally made from scrap, which is why they call it Scrap Fest. We go in the scrap yard and we pick scrap metal and we have a month to build the project. So I loaded up a bunch of stainless steel, went home and just got thinking about it, looked it over and thought, well, I can use that for feather. It's the male peacock that has to be all pretty to attract the female, right? So obviously this is a dude. Can you give us sure. your, your best peacock strut? You know, get a lady peacock in tow. There we go. How's that? Any takers? You gotta, you gotta appear bigger, right, than the, than the competition. Just I don't get... think that's gonna work. <laughs> I don't know, my wife's around here somewhere. If we see my wife, maybe I'll do a little, you know, bird like there mating, mating dance go. or something. All right, so here we are with Lauren from Lock Performance. So, can you tell me what parts did you grab from the scrapyard to be able to start building this? Oh uh, well, the first thing we went for was a lot of tubing because we knew we were gonna need that for the frame and a lot of sheet metal or thin metals that were pliable that we could work with. And then we looked for some springs and bolts and stuff. How is this different than working on oh, man. something for uh, <laughs> for the regular job? This is So this is way different. Normally when we work on something, we have prints, we have procedures that we have to follow. This is nothing like that. We're, we're pretty much spitballing most of this. I've never built anything like this before in my life, so I was kind of spitballing myself. But I have made some flowers and stuff before, but I feel like every welder does that at some point. Yeah, there's a giant steel rose over there. It's like some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the secret of the oozed level flowers coming off that bad boy. You're welcome for that reference. <laughs> All right, now we're here with Jeno. Mm -hmm. Hi. Nice to meet you. Same. Can you tell us a little bit about your art piece here? So the knife edge was invented by George Rickey many years ago. And he was a famous kinetic artist who made things move. Um, and so just trying to follow some of what he has done. Mostly all stainless and it's the leftover pieces of what's cut out pretty much. Okay. So when you think about something like a plasma cutter, they're cutting circles or what they need to manufacture and they're leaving these skeletons. And so from the scrap yard, we were able to pull out two of the skeletons. And that's what you're looking at now. And then the kinetic pieces that are on there, are also from squares, column pieces. In industry, when I do some of this stuff, we call them drops. Yeah. I never thought to actually make a structure out of them. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a great that's idea. That's what you're looking at, yeah. We live right down the street from, from Old Town, so we come down for the collection day, and it's literally like you have your shopping cart, and it's like, ready, set, go, and everybody gets to go collect 500 pounds, and we all... Supermarket sweep, metal it edition. Is. It's kind of funny. <laughs> and it hasn't hit anybody yet today? No, luckily not, <laughs> yeah. So I'll be the first one? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about your piece here. Well, this is Scrap 2D2. This is kind of our interpretation of R2D2, only uh, made out of scrap. For anyone who's familiar with Star Wars, or the Jawas, the guys who live in the desert, they like to collect scrap and a lot of different things. And so this is our idea if the Jawas were to make R2D2. Done this every year, got a couple of pieces here in Old Town. My oldest son's on my team this year. Then my youngest son had his own team. He just graduated high school and he did the R2D2 piece. Kind of cool, I got all, all involved. A family so, affair. Yeah. This year we decided it'd be fun just to do a lot of fun pieces to make a scene. And then we got a little playful with it. I made the Roadrunner, and then my teammate was like, let's make the I-beam look like an anvil. We have the Roadrunner and the anvil, we gotta have the coyote. Oh, so yeah. we, like, we cut out the shadow like the coyote got smacked. We're out here with a very special guest, the man who came up with Scrap Fest. David, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, yeah. My name is uh, David Such. I'm lifelong resident of the Lansing area in Michigan. It started with uh, two brothers, two older brothers who made art out of scrap steel. And my brothers would build these big pieces of abstract sculpture and drag them out into this field. And the farmer 
just would plow around them and, and grow corn. So like, that was my first introduction to scrap art. I wasn't a welder or an artist myself in that fashion. That's where the, my first inspiration came from for art from scrap. I thought it was just a natural, good progression for metal. Jump ahead 20 years, the first thing I see when I move into that area is this scrapyard. And my heart just started beating quicker because look at this treasure we've got in this town, right here, right where I am. For about five years, I thought about it. One day, just sat down with a piece of paper and kind of structured what a festival based on building art from scrap steel would look like. And it didn't look like it was impossible. I kind of went to the first place I thought about the scrapyard and as a resource for those metals. And I knocked on their door and, I, and a cold call and they opened it. So I went in. The way it started was actually from David Such. About 15 years ago, he had an idea for a scrap sculpture competition and he's the one who came to my dad. I have this idea, would you be willing to host it? And my dad was like, of course. Scrap Fest now is so big that it takes up a lot of time. So it's kind of a year round thing at this point. We take like a month off and then we're like right back at it. It's a blast. We shut down the whole street, we got the stage, live music, the brewery right downtown. Just yeah. Around. Just walk around. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're back here, day two, Scrap Fest up in Lansing, Michigan, and we are gonna go talk to more of these artists. We're gonna talk to the organizers. Get ready. <laughs> it's an awesome event. I'm so happy we could come out, and we saw your facility yesterday, but yeah. we were just kind of talking about what scrap is. Would you, do you want to give a definition of how scrap works? Scrap processors, which is what we really are, are the real recyclers of the world. Without our types of companies, nothing that w that's collected would be made into anything. Though. So it's a very sophisticated industry. All right, we have quite the team here, all the way from Texas. What was the idea behind making this one? Nature pretty much was like our, our main theme, and we wanted to make something to kind of honor nature, and the tree was like the main focal point. And we kind of made this waterfall feature, and with the bat, we just like the cherry on top. The bat definitely caught my eye. We're here with one of the foundations, the main foundation that this money is going towards. And do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your foundation? Sure. My name is uh, Michael McKissick. Um, I started the foundation in my son's name. My son, Michael, was murdered uh, eight years ago. We called it Mikey, and it was 23 when it happened. So it's, the foundation is called the Mikey 23 Foundation. So we take houses in the city of Lansing that's in neighborhoods that people, the houses they're going to tear down or houses that's on the demolition or houses that's a red tag and we purchase the houses and we fully we have the houses. So we teach kids everything from electrical, plumbing, HVAC. We teach them how to run skid loaders, pour concrete and culture stone and everything that has to do with the house. Now we need tradespeople like crazy. So it's awesome that you are doing work teaching these skills. Yeah, and the thing about for me, because um, I was on top of a roof at the age of eight, you know, my dad, started a family construction, after the family construction company in our name, and my son was working. That's where he learned the building trade from. But what ended up happening was when he was murdered, you know, our family wanted to start a foundation in his name and try to give back to the community. And the biggest thing about it is that Michael never had any kids. He used to live at home with his mother and I. And so the kids that you see um, that we train from nine year old all the way up, I always consider these as being Mikey's kids. So, yeah. That's amazing. We know that when summertime comes, there's an uptick in violence, right? Because kids don't have nothing to do. So our program is trying to get the kids to do something in the, in the summertime. And it's all about the mentoring and all about the trust and the relationship that we have built over the period of years with them. How did you start working together? We both love working with recycled metal and we both love the hunt for recycled metal. Uh, and then we convert that into works of art. Both of us are abstract artists. And I, I've i made probably 50 pieces out of election signs. You know, the election signs that people stick in the lawns, that that rod nice white. is a wonderful rod to weld with. So yeah, I've made tons of out of election signs. I don't steal them. They're given to me, because that is a federal law. So when you reclaim this material, how do you clean it? Like, how do you get it prepped to weld and turn into these beautiful pieces of art. Yeah, that's the hardest part though. A lot of grinding, um, mostly grinding. Our favorite yeah. color is rust. Yeah, so we love rust. Like even in this piece, you can see that we left a lot of the rust on. So you can sandblast. I mean, that's one way of doing it. Uh, you can use a vinegar solution that can remove the rust. 
But grinding obviously is the quickest, fastest way. The advantage of grinding is the speed and, and preciseness. The disadvantage is in all cases you leave grind marks. So if there's something that you want to keep nice and smooth, you know, you're going to probably use a bath or a sandblaster for that. Tell me a little bit of the inspiration behind this piece. Our children were getting married this summer and I said, I need a garden arch. Let's make an arch for the wedding and then we can take it to Scrap Fest. We want our art to speak to somebody. It's an opportunity to educate somebody. Angela was a teacher for her first career, so she still has that education buzz. And, you know, teaching the younger generation the importance of the honeybees and the butterflies and the flies and everything and to, uh, you know, protect our food sources because we only have one planet. That is true, and we can't all go to Mars at the same time. I don't want to go there. <laughs> okay, my name is Dotson Popola. I'm a scrap artist. It's amazing what scrap metal can do for your life, right? Yeah, scrap can turn your life around. I saw this scrap, uh, scrap yard today and uh, I felt, wow, I just want to jump inside and bring a dinosaur out of it. You know, yeah. <laughs> so I look forward to that maybe next year. This year's People's Choice winner goes to Ivan Eiler. <laughs> A unicorn for Kinder. Do whatever I want to do. He's taking the belt back home with him. All right, it's just, what an honor. This is awesome. This is amazing. I got the belt back. I lost it. I got it back. Give it up for Ivan Eiler, everybody. Yeah. This guy, before he runs away, this is Mr. Bernash, was a teacher at the high school where I went. He ran the metal shop, and he let me come in after school and use the equipment. He's the reason why I'm here today doing what I'm doing, and he just showed up. I haven't seen him in years. How has it been seeing his journey as a former student? Well, I keep track of him as he goes through all of his different things, just to see kids go through it as good as they are. <laughs> You know, school isn't all about reading, writing, and arithmetic. That's what I can tell you. So keep the trades going. That's what yeah. I say. Keep the trades going in school. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And that is a wrap for Scrap Fest 13. And I'm here with the whole reason we came up here, Mr. Johnny S. Welds. What did you think of this year? Overall, great. And Mike, what, what was it like being a part of it this year? Yeah, first time, uh, blown away. I didn't honestly realize anything like this existed at this stage. Uh, coming from the Steel City, we have nothing like this. So it's really cool to come to a small town and just, they would blow a big city out for sure. What do you want to do next year? You coming back? You going to do it again? Absolutely. I'm definitely coming back. Oh, 100%. Five minutes into this, I was like already thinking next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Judging by what we've seen this year on these sculptures, um, next year is going to be out of control. If you're interested in getting into scrap metal art, but you don't know where to start, check out the Weld app. We have all kinds of different courses that can teach you how to weld, and you can get inspiration. We have some projects in there too. And if you want to ask questions, people like Johnny are in there, and they can give you advice on how to get started. So we'll see you in there.